Hello and welcome to the Bang Picks video for the Detroit Pistons at Golden State Warriors. Um, it's nice to get a Detroit Pistons game in here. Uh, they are 15 point underdogs, but we'll talk about that soon. I'm your host, Matthew Motto for Lions.com, here with my co host, Jason Gilbo. And we have a Warriors team still slightly banged up. Draymond Green, probably not playing. Curry, seems like the sportsbooks think he's going to play, but he is questionable with that hand injury. Jason, where are you standing on this game and where are you standing on those Warriors injuries? Um, yeah, so I think the question was obviously Curry's playing. I think the spread well indicates Curry's playing. Mm-hmm. Um, Draymond Green, like the injury is still going to be kind of kind of big, um, but I think in games like this, you won't obviously see that as much, especially as they kind of learn how to play without Green more and play with that smaller lineup. Um, so overall, like I, I look at this Pistons team and I think, yeah, can they cover a 15 point spread? You know, certainly that's in the range of outcomes tonight. Have they against some of the better NBA teams of late? Like, no, they've been getting pretty much crushed. They've had a couple upsets, which we've seen from teams like this before this season. But, you know, overall, they're losing games 135 to 108 to the Suns. They're giving up these huge, huge point games to these offenses. I think this is also a get-right game once again, even though we did see Golden State, you know, get right obviously against Chicago. But I think even more so kind of put that stretch back together. This is a Detroit defense, I mean, 28th, 29th in field goal and three point percentage allowed. Um, offensively, they rank, you know, bottom three in most categories. This is one of the top three defenses. Golden State back at home, um, 18 and three all year, where they've been pretty solid at covering spreads. Yeah, I I think you still got to go with the Warriors here. Yeah. Uh, again, bias Warriors fan. I do think. <sighs> I don't even want to see matchup well. I just think the Warriors, except for the one time we talked about it, they don't lose back-to-back games, and it seems like they always come out so hard. We kind of saw that with the Chicago Bulls game where, you know, you didn't want back-to-back-to-back losses, and they came out and dominated, obviously helped out by that injury to Zach Levine, who I think makes the game closer. But regardless, they were playing amazing, and they, they come out so motivated, and I, I think we'll see the same thing here against the Pistons. Motivated. Kind of pissed off, probably yelled at by Draymond Green in the locker room for hours on the end, and uh, I just think they come out, take care of business. And it's not close. Fifteen is scary though, just because fifteen you're starting to get in the range where you're winning the game by twenty the entire time, and you still can get a backdoor cover with like players that you've never heard of in your life in the fourth quarter. Um, I'd still take them just because honestly I project the Warriors play like they should be playing with Curry. By the end of the third, you should be up by 30. Um, so I think the minus 15 is slightly a value. Uh, but this is one... Actually, I would kind of sit here and be like, you don't have to bet, right? Like, sometimes when these spreads get this big, maybe it's just better to, to avoid them. How do you feel about the over-under in such a mismatch game like this? This one's always tricky just because... I mean, like, I, I also, I agree. You don't have to bet the spread. Um, larger spreads like this are kind of a nightmare to bet in the NBA, but to the total, like 218 and a half, I think you obviously can kind of lean on, you know, the, the Warriors doing their part and probably hitting 115 plus in this one. Um, it's going to be a matter of if the Pistons can find their shots. Like they have some guys that can put up some points in this one. Uh, I think that's no, like, you know, Kate Cunningham is also growing into the game. Sadiq Bay is someone who's there. Killian Hayes, like, we're finally kind of seeing the Pistons put some offensive nights together, which we haven't seen before. And I kind of worry that happens late in the game when the Warriors kind of let off their pace a little bit. Um, so this one's tricky as well. Like kind of actually just like player props more from this game than anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back to the argument we used to make. It seemed like every game pre January 1st. And that was the Warriors are second first you know, in defensive efficiency up there with the Suns. They're an elite defense that I think no one's actually that close to sides the Suns in the NBA. Um, the way Kuminga was playing in that game against the Bulls, the way Wiggins was playing, like, if they come out playing near that level, can have near that motivation against the Pistons, they don't get to 100 points. It's just, it gets too hard. Um, unfortunately, you could maybe see an over at, like, a 122, like, 98 game. Or a 99 game. I just don't think it's that probable. So if, if you're betting just off of how, you know, 
uh, the amount of outcomes possible, I think the under hits more so than not. But again, it's the same thing as the minus 15. It's like, do I feel super confident? No. Like, it's almost like I know this game's going to play out, but still, neither of these picks are that much of a value. Yeah. All right, so what player props are you confident about, Jason? Um, I love Clay Thompson over 15 and a half points Ooh. tonight. Uh, minus 115. I think this is going to be one of those games where we see him take a ton of field goal attempts. Um, you know, I expect obviously better efficiency numbers. In this game, it's a pretty stout matchup against the Detroit defense that, you know, struggles against the three point line. Um, and overall, like, they're going to use these types of games to kind of get Thompson back in the groove. So I think take advantage of it. Yeah, 100%. Um, like you said, he hasn't looked obviously himself yet, but it, the shot's still there. It's not like he lost his shooting form. He's looking good. He's taking drives, and I do think this game could be one where we actually start to see him hit. You know, he could get fifteen and a half points all on three pointers um, if they give him yeah. the opportunity. He gets just a little warm from range. I really his wish. Prop, you oh, go ahead. His, yeah, his three point prop. Over two and a half plus one hundred five is another one you can target. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I love that one just because he's not—he's definitely not a uh, Patrick Beverly or Grayson Allen where it's like this has to happen. But at plus one hundred five, I think to get to fifteen and a half, it's very likely that he has three three pointers. Um, there's a few ones where he has maybe two three pointers, but it's most likely that he hits three, gets to like seventeen, eighteen, twenty points. Yeah. Um, so I, I really do like that one. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, I'm talking about Kaminga so much, I was trying to make sure he's not out just because we don't see any player props, though. You know, you very rarely see player props for him in games. I just think without Draymond Green, he's actually very vital to the team. Like, it, it's not the same. He's not playing the same role or anything, but his length, his athleticism on defense, and his smarts, he's, he's really, I think, learning other green. He's a great player to pick for steals, for boards. Like He's been doing the dirty work, and he's been scoring points. So if you get some player props for him, and he's playing, because <laughs> I want to just double-check and make sure I really like him in this matchup, um, especially if the Warriors are up big, because he's, he's kind of on that fringe where it's like he's, he's going to be important to the Warriors team regardless if it's close or big, but even if it's big, he's probably still getting some minutes, kind of like Kevon Looney. They'll throw him in there um, and just have him soak up some time. So, just pad some stats there. With him out, I was looking towards Looney. Unfortunately, he's at minus 150 for over 5.5 points. Sportsbooks have caught on. They finally figured out what everyone was doing, and uh, we can't profit from there. So, now I'm struggling a little bit. Went to the total rebounds, and there. I was like, you know, Andrew Wiggins, I think he's going to have a good game. He's at minus 140 for his rebound. So, what I'm trying to say is I don't have a player prop because everything is too freaking juiced. Um, maybe I can make a really cool same game parlay, but I'm not going to go through that for this video. There's some lines there I like, so if you want to shop those around, maybe you can get Wiggins over 4.5 at minus 120 somewhere. You can get the Kavon Looney points, maybe minus 125. I think both of them are very, very, very likely to hit. That's why they're so juiced, but hopefully on FanDuel or DraftKings or you know, BetMGM, points bet, whatever sports book you're using, you could uh, get slightly better odds there and actually place a bet that makes sense. Any uh, closing thoughts, Jason? Your conclusion to this essay? Um, yeah, don't feel this game if you don't feel like it. Like It's a monster spread. I, I think player props are more enticing from this game. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Wiggins. Um, I think he's minus 125 on assists for over two and a half. Um, he's had 10 in the last two games. I think Thompson being back also helps him out. Green being out helps him there as well. So I think if you're t trying to target some Wiggins props, that would be my one that I like. Yeah. I think Wiggins could have a stat sheet type game, you know, like a six rebounds, four assists, 20 points. These are the kind of games I see Wiggins really dominating. Um, yeah. I want him against the Bucks to dominate, but uh, we saw what happened there against Giannis. He, he delayed it at night. Yeah, exactly. He was waiting. He was saving his energy for the Bulls. He knew that one would be the one where we talked a little smack about the Warriors. All right. So in conclusion, we like the Warriors minus fifteen in the under, or I like the under slightly. Again, not super confident, or we don't think it's a great value. While we think the Warriors win, and the point total probably ends up around that two twenty range, two eighteen range, two sixteen range. 
these aren't great bets just to make money on. When it comes to player props, Jason really likes Clay Thompson over 15 and a half points. I'm in agreement there. And if you're betting that, maybe you can sprinkle a little bit over two and a half over total three point field goals at plus 105. You're getting plus value. You're getting something that's probably close to a prerequisite for the over 15 and a half. Um, while Thompson can score 17 without hitting three pointers, three three pointers, I think the plus 105 is just a slightly better value there. Wiggins over two and a half assists. Jason called that one out. I'm in agreement. Really like it. I also like Wiggins over four and a half rebounds. Kevon Looney over five and a half points. If you can get, you know, closer to minus 120, 125 value on those player props. Thank you for watching. As always, you can click subscribe and the bell to get notified when videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets, and we'll see you for your next one very soon.